All right. Well, welcome everybody. It is ten o'clock. Uh, we are we are frantically clicking admit all still here as people are filtering in. So uh, this is a popular thing. Everybody's really excited about us. A set of resolutions. So um, who said people don't love paperwork? Um, what we're going to do today is talk about uh, a set of resolutions that largely Carl wrote. Carl gets credit for this. He put these things together, and he's going to talk about. Uh, how these ARPA spending resolutions can help you to document what you're going to do and how you're going to use them. Uh, we also have some very good news uh, related to these and to the ARPA program as well. Um, so Carl is going to, to talk about how to use these things, where they're located on the web page. Um, please, uh, you, can, you can throw questions into the chat um and we'll we'll try to i'll try to answer them in text so people can see them but then we will take questions at the end as well okay um so carl uh why don't you uh unmute yourself and and we'll have you start uh start presentation thank you all right sounds good let's see let's make sure all right is that presenting the right slide there yes perfect all right, so like Steve said, we'll discuss first an update to ARPA, and then we'll go through the resolutions where you can find them on our webpage, um, what they're for, things like that. So to start with the update, earlier this month, the Department of Treasury published the final rule. Now, there are a couple of documents that we have to be aware of when we're discussing the American Rescue Plan Act and what uh, Steve or I would reference when we're discussing this. But first, there is the bill that was passed into law by Congress and then signed by the president. That is the American Rescue Plan Act. In that bill, um, or now law, we are provided essentially four spending categories. That is the responses to the pandemic and its negative economic impacts, premium pay to essential workers, um, lost revenue replacement and investments into water, sewer, and broadband. Now, that law also gave administrative powers to the Department of Treasury to help interpret that. The law itself, uh, although it's quite long, it doesn't address everything. And so the Department of Treasury earlier or last May published their interim final rule, the way in which we were to begin to start interpreting the American Rescue Plan Act for townships, for local governments and, and federal government or, and uh, state governments as well. Now, during that period from May up through January, the Department of Treasury was receiving comments from uh, groups that were subject to the American Rescue Plan Act to help um, craft a uh, a rule that would uh, benefit, uh, that, that would be good for both parties. So after consolidating those comments and considering them and maybe applying them in some cases or not applying them in others, um, the Department of Treasury released its final rule. This is the rule in which that we can Base off our or base our interpretation of the American Rescue Plan Act off of, and so what this does is it helps give helps give clarity as to how we can then spend those funds. Now, when we have talked about ARPA in the past, we've been discussing the interim final rule. Now, the final rule broadens ARPA uses generally. The final rule says that in its text. Um, things like, and, and then we can just see that based on how the comments have grown over time. The largest change here for townships is how we're going to determine lost revenue. Now there are two options. Previously, um, we just worked with a formula. Um, that's what our lost revenue calculator is based on, uh, things like that. Now there's a second option there too. If you do not want to work with the formula, you can choose to utilize a standard allowance. The standard allowance is for $10 million, meaning that if you received ARPA funds 
in an amount less than $10 million, which I believe all Minnesota townships have, then you can utilize all of your ARPA funds in that lost revenue category. As we've discussed in the past, lost revenue includes, it's used for government services, meaning you can use it for roads, gravel, bridges, you can pay wages, you can pay contracts, uh, including your fire contract, your, your snowplower greater operator contract. Um, again, if, if you're spending on a service, then you're going to be able to pay for that out of lost revenue. Now there's two big caveats here. If you have pre-existing debt, that cannot be paid for out of lost revenue. So if you had a, uh, a road project or a bridge project or, or uh, built a new town hall in your township and you had to take out certificates of indebtedness or bonds for that, you would not be able to pay for those bonds or certificates out of lost revenue. The other is you can't uh, put money into a pension fund. Um, now there are some uh, areas around that, but just generally can't put money into a pension fund. So to go over this again, if you received ARPA funds and that was in an amount less than $10 million, you would be able to use all of those funds under that standard allowance, meaning in lost revenue, meaning that you can pay for government services. Now there are other major changes as well. So there are clarifications to what is and is not an allowed expenditure in the response to the pandemic category. There are certain streamlining uh, features to the premium pay. And then there's increases to the eligible broadband projects. And then there are some other minor uh, increases to sewer and water projects. But again, for most of this, if you can pay for it out of uh, normally, then it might just be easier for um, uh, using it using resolutions and documenting it to pay for it out of lost revenue will probably be easier reporting later on as well now speaking of resolutions let's discuss why we've developed these resolutions so the purpose is to help in record keeping um, we're getting more information on reporting over time and these are probably going to help make reporting a little easier. You can just pull off the information from the resolution and then place that into the reporting program. Again, helping administrative time, things like that. If there's any audits that come by, you would also be able to show this as evidence. Hey, here's our thought process. Here's what we did. And then this is a little bit different, but if you're looking for ideas of what to spend it on, you just received a surplus of funds. Um, you can look at ideas in these resolutions to see whether you'd be or whether it'd be something to be good to invest in. So something like technological improvements or improvements to township facilities like adding ADA compatible ramps, maybe upgrading the ventilation system, things like that. Now, what these resolutions are not is they're not required to complete. They'll be helpful, but they're not required to complete. Secondly, these resolutions are not reporting. This is not part of the reporting process per se. It may help in that in the future, but these are not required as part of the reporting process. Now, with that being said, let's look at one of these resolutions. So with the changes to the final rule, I do want to look at the lost revenue replacement resolution because this is the one that has changed the most significantly. So if we look at this resolution, first we can look at these blue boxes on where to fill out the portion of the resolution that you would need to do to be able to make um, your, 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 or when spending the cost. So it's going to begin with some pros about what the American Rescue Plan Act is, 
the SLRF funds, SLFRF, state and local fiscal recovery funds, um, how much was delegate or provided to state and local governments, defines towns as a non-entitlement unit of government, meaning that you're eligible to receive um, some ARPA funds, discusses the four main categories found in the American Rescue Plan Act, then begins to look at lost revenue replacement, saying that these can be used towards government fund services, but cannot be used for to pay off debt or to replenish the rainy day fund. It also discusses the completion of the final rule and that there is the standard allowance in which local governments can use. So here you will decide how much of these ARPA funds you would like to use out of the amount you've received. So this can be all of the funds. So if you as a township receive $10,000, um, you can then put in $10,000 as lost revenue funds and then just utilize that as general fund money from that point forward. If you'd like to use some of the other portions of ARPA in which you are given powers that you don't normally have, so things are going like this will be uh, creating a grant program or uh, providing premium pay to essential workers, those kinds of things aren't going to be regularly allowed outside of the American Rescue Plan Act. So you can set aside some of your funds. So going back to that $10,000, if you believe you will uh, have to spend the 5,000 to administer and then provide grants to programs. You can put 5,000 into lost revenue and then set aside another 5,000 for grants. So as we continue to walk through this, we say that the government seeks, the town seeks to pay for government services out of lost revenue. Then we can see that this is a permitted expenditure. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town will pay for government services, which is your project name in 2020, be that two, three, or four out as part of their lost revenue replacement. And then again, is project for the appropriate year. So this can be 210102. And then you would pass that and then sign that. And this can all be done at your meeting. Now, where to find this? you would go to our web page let me get that here so you would go to our web page mntownships.org from our web page you will go to about our uh, news and events and the top item listed is arpa info in that ARPA info page, you'll want to go to ARPA uses and then scroll down and then you can find our spending resolution. So again, you have broadband, grants, improvement to facilities, and then the one that we're looking at, lost revenue replacement. So then you'll download that. It will first open this in a Google Drive. So as you can see here, the blue boxes that were there in the file that we had before, are no longer there. If you'd like to have those blue boxes so you can fill in that PDF, what you'll do is you will download the PDF. And then as we download that, it will then open again and we have our boxes and we can modify uh, the PDF once more. So with all that being said, are there any questions? I have a question. So every time that we choose to use money, say we use uh, uh, ten thousand for for gravel, uh, for mm -hmm. yep, uh, and then we have uh, some left over. Do we need to fill out another um, uh, uh, for, form uh, for for that? Sure. So. Uh, the, the, the short answer is it depends, right? The good attorney answer. Um, 
what it's really going to depend on is how you um, decide to spend that so the or, or how to account for that so what you can do is you can just say we're going to allocate these funds towards government services transfer them to your general fund and then you wouldn't need to pass another resolution unless until you receive more ARPA funds come uh, mid to late summer or early fall now if here. you just start going Carl sorry head Steve go ahead now, if you're going to just use those for a particular purpose at a particular moment, so you want to don't know how much of your um, funds you're going to receive or not receive, how much of your funds you would like to set aside for the other powers that are not normally uh, relegated and you want to spend on a specific cost, again, like $10,000 on gravel, then you would have to pass that every time you're going to be essentially transferring money from your ARP account to your general fund. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna jump in here. Carl, here's the way folks I envision townships are gonna do this, the easy way. You're gonna recognize probably the entire amount of ARP money that you're gonna get. I know you got half first and you'll get half later. Yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna do the resolution and you're gonna recognize the entire amount as general government services because it's very flexible. Okay, yes, you could do it per spending effort, but you don't have to. You could do this as one resolution, recognizing the entire amount to spend for general government services. I think most towns are gonna to do that. The special cases where you may not do that, where you're gonna need the, the other resolutions, okay, is if you wanna do like premium pay. Well, premium pay is something that is specifically authorized through this ARPA program. And you can't necessarily do that with your normal township dollars. So you may not be doing that with lost revenue. You'd use the premium pay resolution. Or if you want to do a grant program to, to public and private institutions in your community, generally towns can't do that. So you need to use the response to the pandemic uh, resolution for that the part of the money that you're gonna use for grants, okay? But most, most townships have asked us, we wanna use this for roads, payroll, uh, the, the things you typically pay for, you're going to do that in lost revenue. Okay. That's how I think most folks are going to end up doing this. So Carl, uh, got some questions here. I'll we'll throw it to you from the chat. Um, we don't think we have lost revenue or what if the town doesn't have any lost revenue? Can the town still use the standard allowance? Yes. So even if you don't have lost revenue under the formula, there is a standard amount that any government entity can use. Uh, that that can be claimed as lost revenue and that's again that standard allowance okay uh someone asked where do we find the resolution we've pasted links into the chat and carl did mention where to find them but again our web page news and information the tab on the upper right arpa you arpa information it's in there okay in the arpa uses section if you can't find it call us we'll walk you through how to get it on the web page okay carl next one do we use the amount we have received to date or the total we will receive when we get the second payment in September? Uh, you would receive the, or, or do the amount you have received to date. Um, I mean, you can't really designate funds you don't have yet. So you Not can it. certainly wait until September to do that. Or... And here you're gonna have two lawyers disagreeing. I think go ahead. Mm -hmm. If you know you're gonna use the whole amount for general revenue, it's, it's allocated to, you just don't have it yet. Right now we're just categorizing. So. Either way, it's fine here. Okay. What I'm trying to mm -hmm. think of is here is how to minimize your reporting burden later. And, and if we can do this in one shot, you have less reporting to deal with. So you can do either. Now, now Carl, certainly right on the, you can't spend it if you don't have it. Okay. But on these, we're just designating into pools, into these, into these pots of money that we're going to have to use for reporting later. Okay. All right. So Carl, um, next one. Do we know what date the state dispersed the balance of ARP funds left over from townships that did not apply? I believe it's different for, they, they did it like they did with the um, original disbursement where they did it in tranches. It was, uh, some groups may have received it a little earlier than others. And so there's not a clear date on when that occurred. 
um, I will post a link in chat in which you can look at and determine how much you've received and what day you did receive that uh, in a, in a uh, spreadsheet from Minnesota Management and Budget. Do we have a resolution for each category and each project? So I'm gonna, Carl is muted there, I'm sorry. So, so on this one, yes, we have a resolution for each of the broad types of spending you could do, but that's, that's not necessarily on the project basis. So for example, if you, if you got $10,000 from ARPA, you and you want to use it all in lost revenue, you do your resolution recognizing we're taking this amount, putting it towards general government services. Now, what you actually spend it on isn't necessary. It's not in this resolution because all you're doing is designating the category that you're going to put it in with the resolution. Once it's in the category, you put some in roads, you put some in payroll, you put some in uh, improvements for the town hall, whatever it is that you're going to do with those things that are allowed. Okay. Carl, are you able to, to uh, unmute again here? There we go. Okay, good. Yep. All right. Um, are, uh, are, what's the timing? When should they do these resolutions? Uh, as soon as possible. As soon as you know how much you want to allocate to each category. So again, as soon as possible. Do we need a lost revenue replacement resolution for each year of this spending? For So if we go into 2023, do we need one for every year? Can we do it in one year? And I'm going to say one, okay? Make this less burdensome. If you know you're going to put it on in lost revenue, do it once. Don't, don't go back and do this over again. This is not meant to be a burden on you. This is meant to simplify it. And if you can do it once, one and done, okay? Do that once. Um, this, uh, several, several are asking the same question. So a lot of these, do we do it, do we do it you know, once for the first dump of money? No, folks. You're going to get the money. It's allocated to you. It's promised to you. Okay, so um, you can designate. You know what you're going to get. You can designate that now and actually spend it when you receive it. Okay, can ARPA be used for set dollar bonuses for transfer site workers at our town transfer site? So a, a, a garbage station, or must it be per mm -hmm. hour based on hours worked? I think this is maybe premium pay related. Yep, that sounds like the case. Uh, it, it's going to be based on hours worked. Premium pay is allocated um, through uh, uh, up to an additional $13 per hour. So it can't just be a lump sum, but it's going to be up to an additional $13 hour, dollars per hour worked. Next one. How do we know what portion of money is lost revenue? And this one comes up a lot, folks. This is really confusing for folks. They're expecting to see, well, gosh, we lost all this money. That's not how this works, okay? There's some governments that did lose money. They lost services. They lost some, some amount of money coming in on development fees or something like this. That's not what this is, okay? For you, with this new rule change, I don't doesn't matter. Take the whole thing, put it to lost revenue. You don't have to justify that you had lost revenue because the federal government is saying, we think you're going to lose revenue or you have lost revenue. And that's the 4.1% growth thing that we talked about for a long time, okay? In, in that old system, if you did nothing and your, your levy didn't change, you lost revenue because of inflation. And every year you do that. Every year your voters don't increase the levy a little bit, you're losing purchasing power, okay? So for this, you don't have to justify that you lost revenue. Please don't try. Just fill out the resolution, put it into general government services and use it, okay? That's just fine to do. Uh, can we use the funds for spraying our road ditches for weed problems? Does this qualify as roads? Carl? Yes. So when I say roads, when I say wages, when I say these list of government services, that's a non-exhaustive list. If it's something that the township does as a portion of running uh, the township and it costs money to do that, you will be able to pay for that out of lost revenue. Again, it's used just like general fund money. You just can't put it into a savings account that is existing past December 31st, 2024. Uh, you can't pay certain pension costs and you can't pay off pre-existing debt. But if you're going to spray weeds and road ditches, if you're going to lay gravel, 
you want to use it to plow roads or to salt roads, if that's going to be part of your general government services, that's going to be included under lost revenue. Next one's a CTAS question. Lori, do we have you on? Yes, I'm here. Lori, do you know how would CTAS uh, reflect the ARPA money and are there reports that they should run out of CTAS related to ARPA? Well, first we suggest that you put the ARPA money in a separate fund and then there are account numbers from the state auditor's office for those ARPA monies. So then you can run reports on just those account numbers and just that fund. Thank you. If anybody, if anybody needs a copy of those um, account numbers, just email me or give me a call. Thank you. Um, if we're planning on assisting the county with broadband, do we need two separate resolutions? No. Not necessarily. You could, you have choice here. You could recognize some of this as broadband category spending and you're partnering with another government or again, you recognize it all as lost revenue and the township can always give money to another government. And so you just end up transferring money to the county under that lost revenue system. Again, it's a simplification, okay? And there's some advantage to that in that the broadband category has restrictions about what can be installed and where that money can go. It's meant for uh, uh, the infrastructure to deliver to the premises, right? Not to get it up to. It's it's the stuff to deliver service. It's a big picture kind of thing. Okay, so some some projects won't fit in that, but they may allow it under lost revenue because now you're giving to the money the money to the county that they can use for this this program that may not qualify in some aspects in the broadband category. Um, Let's see, once the resolution is filled out, do we hang on to it? Do we need to send it anywhere? Nope, hang on to it, document it. This is just for documentation to say, here's what we did, here's the reasoning. And Carl laid that out really well. It's boring stuff you may not wanna read, but it says the federal law and it says, here's all the, the justifications that we're okay. We get to do what we did with this money, okay? So that's all there. The clerk hangs on to it, you file it. Um, you, I, I don't anticipate you're going to need to spend this into the federal government. Okay, but if you do, there you got it. Okay, and if somebody asks, well, how did you use the money? You can show you had a plan and here's how it works. Okay, uh, where do we find the list of suggestions you talked about? Carl, um, well, would this just be the ARPA, the, the spending resolutions to give them a broad idea? Right, yep, you can look at the ARPA resolutions on our uses page. Uh, we also have a couple of webinars that discuss uh, things that you can use those funds on. If they want to use it for a new town hall, would they use this resolution or is there an option to use ARPA funds for a town hall? Uh, you would just use this resolution. And by this resolution, are you talking about the lost revenue resolution? The lost revenue re resolution, yeah. yeah. Uh, should we keep track of what we're spending in government services with this money by invoice? So they keep track of it on an individual spending basis. And yes, you will need to. Okay, this, these resolutions are to designate money. You've got this pool of money. Now we're gonna put it into these categories that the federal government say are acceptable. But for reporting purposes later, we know you're gonna to have to say, here's a, you know, we had this much, we put $100 into uh, this category. We put $100 into that category, right? And, and you're gonna to have to show, here's what we've spent in that reporting. So yes, you will still need to track the actual spending that you're allocating to this money, all right? And that's that's fine, it's not too terrible to do, but, but somehow keep a list of, all right, we're using our ARPM money for that purpose or this purpose. Um, and and so you'll Steve, you'll be able to report that. Steve, this is Val Levas. Question for you in, mm -hmm. in that, Lori made a comment to create a separate fund for that. So if you create a separate fund for that, Anything that we spend out of that, like for um, five thousand dollars for graveling roads, since it's out of that fund, that's our accounting process, right? Yes, and if you have only one category, if you put it all into lost revenue, you won't need to break it down any further. But if you do some in lost revenue and some in uh, response to the pandemic, because you want to do a grant program, well, it's in one account. All your ARP money went into one account, but you're subdividing in the spending categories, and on the reporting you have to do later you're gonna to have to show which money went to which category, okay? 
Right. So, so the you loss may need to subdivide later. But the, if you put everything in lost revenue, and I think that's where everybody's kind of a little bit confused, lost revenue really is general fund, if you want to use it, with the, the two exceptions you outlined. Yeah. Yep. Correct. Okay. If you, if you have only, if you put it on lost revenue, you don't have to divide it any further. It's all going to go into that but one. From a, but CPAS from a CPS account. accounting standpoint, I would think that since I have it in a separate fund, I would still then put in my my object codes and then my accounting numbers off of that fund. And Lori, I'm not going to, I'm not going to attempt to be an expert on CTAS. Lori, yeah. is this possible? Would and I, if they know they're going to split the money into different categories, could they just subdivide it in CTAS directly? Or would I transfer it all to my general fund or road and bridge? And subdivide it right in that fund that you put the ARPA money in. You wouldn't have to transfer it anywhere. No, and, and you wouldn't need to. If spending on road and bridge doesn't have to come from the road and bridge fund, okay? It could come from the general fund. It can come from, you know, something else. Um, so that's okay. It, it's just an accounting matter. So yes, you can subdivide within CTAS, and that would be the way to go if you have more than one category. We have a ton of questions. So I'm going to go quickly, and I'm going to give Carl the hard ones I don't know. Uh, let's see. Where do we find the discussions? Okay, uh, town hall. Can you wait till September to do the resolution? Yes, you can wait. It's just, if you know you're gonna spend the money, you should do it. You know, you can recognize with this resolution, you should certainly do the resolution before you spend the money if you can. If you already spent some, it's okay. Just do the resolution to recognize it. This is, this is acceptable to do. Uh, if we wanna allocate funds to gravel, do we move to road and bridge? No, keep it right where it is. Just spend it from that account. It does not have to go to road and bridge to be used on road and bridge. Um, do we know the second amount? You should, because it should be, uh, you, your first half was a first half. The smaller payment you got later was a supplemental. Um, I don't know if the second payment will, will, be, uh, will include an extra supplemental. That part I don't know, and we'd have to check with MMB about how they accounted for that, okay? Does payroll need to be submitted separ separately? No, it's just paid out. So you just take money from the ARPA fund and move it to the place you need uh, it, for whichever you're gonna pay for it, okay? Um, they want to use for local business wages paid by paid to employees that did not work because they're off with COVID. Also refund businesses lost income. Dave, this is a response to the pandemic category. You will not be able to use the money that we're talking about in the lost revenue category and put it towards a grant program like this. And it's because townships generally can't do that. The way townships are doing it in this program is because we're relying on the federal uh, permission to do it. So for you, for your town, you need to put at least some of this money into a response to the pandemic resolution, allocate it that way, and you're going to administer a grant program described here. You may end up with extra money, and if you do, then you can put it in lost revenue or your other category. Okay. Uh, is there a way to use some money for community involvement and leadership development? Get to know your township. I will say yes, it's possible. Uh, I guess we'd have to talk to, to talk about what ways you want to do that. Okay, anything you can generally do as a township, you'll be able to do with this money, with the exceptions Carl mentioned. Do we need a separate resolution to spend a small portion of funds that have already been spent? Just document that you did it. Just go back and use a resolution that fits the spending you already did. Okay. And Carl has posted a, a spreadsheet allocation from MMB that shows what everybody got. Uh, will there be actual printed information for townships that don't have internet connections? If you need something from our webpage, in general, this or anything else, you can contact uh, our office, call us, and we will mail information that you may need, okay? Uh, how do we know what we're going to get for the second installment? Again, that goes back to that spreadsheet. And if, you, if you're not sure, you can contact us. We'll get you in touch with MMB. Okay. Uh, there was extra money received because towns didn't apply. Will we get extra again this year? That's the part I don't know. I don't know if the entire undistributed portion was given in the first, in that supplemental payment, or if they're holding some of it and they're going to give part of it in the second distribution. I don't, I did not get any information on that. Uh, can they be used for training and maintenance uh, if they become ill or quarantined and needs to take time off? Yes. Uh, we're going to have a lot of yeses here, okay? A lot of yeses. Can we use the money for this? Yes. Almost almost anything, though, with lost revenue. That's what's so great about that rule change. This opened the door to nearly anything except those couple things Carl mentioned as you cannot do. Um, 
if we're going to use for general government services or spending to pay out claims, um, Grand Lake, I'm not sure. I don't quite understand the question. So if you could follow up, I'll, I'll try to get the answer to this one, but I don't quite understand the question. Could we list it as a percentage instead of an amount? Uh, I think for reporting, you're going to have to list an amount. So I, you could do it as a percentage, but ultimately it has to come out to a dollar value. Um, that's fine. If you want to do it in your in your resolution, you have to add a line as a percentage. Do we still have to? Do we need to fill out a lost revenue report to report funds? No, you're going to do reporting that's going to document what you put your money towards and, and how you did it. But it's not going to be like line item spending on what you what you did. Okay, it's again, it's not supposed to be hard. I think the Department of Revenue is looking at it, saying we don't want to deal with this mess either. So they're trying to make it as easy as possible. Uh, can we make a resolution for the amount of our first times two? Yes, as, as long as you know, you can recognize it in one resolution if that's what you want to do. Can we use our funds under lost revenue if we raised our levy every year? Yes, okay. Don't try to justify your lost revenue. You're just going to get in, stuck in a loop. Don't try to do it, okay? You have lost revenue now, every one of you, whether you think you do or not. The federal government has said you do, okay? As a matter of law, you do. All right. Um, I saw a chat message about how to move money from CTAS to ARPA. Yeah, again, it, it, it's recognizing it in CTAS. And if you have specific CTAS questions, remember our clerk trainers offer some help on that. And so you can contact us on how to do things, how to, how to actually do them in, in CTAS. I won't get into the administration of CTAS here, but certainly call the office, contact Lori or one of our other trainers. I saw Dominique is on today and, and David, uh, they might be able to help you with that, okay? Dollar amount the town received is only the first half, that is correct. And you, you did get an extra amount. So a lot of towns didn't apply. And folks, we're getting the, the common question this week is, hey, we didn't apply. Can we apply now? Nope. Okay. You guys got the benefit of those towns that decided not to apply. They're out of luck. Okay. Now you'll get the second half. Like I said, we don't know if that's going to be a supplemental amount or if it's just twice the initial payment. Okay. Well, we'd have to check. Um, you need to select online that you're using a standard allowance. No, it's just accept it. Just report it there. That's just fine. When we use the lost revenue formula, we do not get the amount indicated by the formula and receive more. Why the difference? Uh, uh, Hiram, don't worry about the calculator. We're done with the calculator. I'm probably going to remove it from the web page because it's just confusing people. You don't need it anymore. If you got less than 10 million, you can use the entire amount you got as lost revenue. No more justification needed. Okay. Uh, put it into a savings account. Carl mentioned something, but we couldn't have it in a savings account that's open after December 2024. Carl, can you can you explain? Do we need to move it out by then? It, yes. So the ARPA funds have to be obligated. You have to have a specific project for them hit by December 31st of 2024. So uh, for your funds, what that's going to mean is you can't save, you can't gather interest on those funds past December 31st. Otherwise, you would have to return those any unspent funds or unobligated funds to the federal government. And there's a lot of trading that can be done with this. OK, you put it in a savings account and grow it. That's fine. And eventually you have to use it, though. That's what Carl's saying. You have to have a project. Your project might be general government services. So you do the resolution for that, put it in your general fund uh, or, or your ARPA fund, I'm sorry, and you spend for general services out of the ARPA fund, okay? Um, but it, it can't just sit in a savings account because that's a rainy day fund idea. Uh, Leslie did put contact information for our office in the chat. For those on a phone, we are at 1-800-228-0296. Again, 1-800-228-0296. Okay. Uh, did all townships receive an extra ARPA payment? Yeah, all those that applied, you were entitled to some extra amount. If you didn't get it, we'd need to contact MMB and see what happened there. Okay. Again, with CTAS, you're not transferring money from the ARPA fund into Road and Bridge or into Fire or into something else. You can spend it right out of right out of your ARP bucket. Okay, that's fine. Otherwise, you're just adding extra counting lines for yourself, and it's I don't I don't have a reason it's necessary. Now, if one of the trainers tells you it's necessary, go ahead. I don't see any legal reason you'd have to do that though, okay? If there's an accounting reason, that's that's not my wheelhouse, okay? But for legal reasons, no. No reason to move it around just to spend it on the same thing you intended to, okay? Um, 
you need to actually put in, you should put in the amount you received. I guess uh, you could say all, all we received is gonna go to this, but I would, I would put in the exact amount so that there's this trail of here's the amount we got, here's the amount we're putting into this spending, okay? Will we still be sending in an audit by April 30th each year? So far the plan is yes, you'll have to do annual reporting, but if this is done once, there isn't anything to update, okay? Uh, that may be an advantage for many townships. If using all the funds as offset revenue to general fund, do we still need to track what specific expenses we have applied to it for reporting later? So with reporting, here's what we know. We know you're going to have to pick a category, okay? So lost revenue is probably going to be the category. You're going to say how much of the money you got goes to lost revenue category. Maybe it's all of it, okay? It's $10,000. That's all you got. You're going to put all 10000 there. When you go into report, you're going to have your project number, you make it up. You're going to have your project title, general government services. You're going to have the amount you allotted, $10,000. you are going to have, here's what we have spent out of it so far, or, because we haven't seen it yet, we've spent less than 50% of the allocation, more than 50% of the allocation, or all of it. As far as I know, that's what you're going to have to report. You're also going to have to give those two forms, copies of the two forms that the board ex, uh, should have executed at the time you applied. Okay, to the federal government. So you say, yep, we promise to follow your rules. Okay, that's what it looks like so far. Okay, and we don't have all the details of reporting, but that's the basic outline that we have from the guidance given so far. Okay, Carl does rule. Carl is excellent. He's been a huge help on these. He's done a tremendous amount of work, and I thank him for that because um, I had other things to, to help with too. And he took this and ran with it, and I think he did an exceptional job. So thank you to Carl on that. Um, General count, okay. The word resolution read 100%. Um, I, I suppose you could. I, I prefer that folks pick the amount so that it's very clear what's being used there because eventually you're going to have to know anyway. You have to know how much money you got. You can't just say 100% and do nothing more. We're going to have to know how you're spending it down. Okay. Um, uh, it looks like Kelly, you might have a, a different message for me. Call me and we'll talk about that, that purchasing question later. Terry, you're confused and you are not alone. I understand that, I'm sorry. So if you allocated 10,000 to the lost revenue, which account would you move it into? You wouldn't move it anywhere, okay? Put your ARP money into a separate CTAS account. The board then spends out of that account consistent with the rules of whatever category you're in. Don't try to move it, okay? Unless, again, Lori, maybe chime in here. Is there any reason to shift it from the ARPA a account in CTAS into Road and Bridge before you go spend it on gravel. And it's there's no reason to transfer anything. Just set up a separate fund for ARPA. And okay. everything that comes out goes through ARPA. It'll be easy for reporting. If you start transferring money, you're going to be calling the trainers wondering how you what you did wrong because now I'm not balancing. So don't transfer any monies. Please make it easy on yourself. ARPA money goes in ARPA fund. It is spent out of the ARPA fund. It is not transferred. Okay. All right. Uh, you can lower your levy now. Gussie, go ahead, lower the levy. Let the voters do what they're going to do. It does not affect your lost revenue. Again, we're no longer trying to justify our lost revenue. If less than 10 million, that's what you got. It's all lost revenue if you want. Can you give to private broadband provider to help them build up fiber to customers? Is that a grant? Kathy, in this case, you'd probably be using one of the categories that's specifically called up for infrastructure development. And you may end up being able to do that. There's some rules and it's a high bar of what they have to deliver. They have to deliver really good service, okay, to be able to do this. It's, uh, I believe it's 100 megabits symmetrical or it's like 100 download 20 up, I think like that, or they have to justify, here's why we can't do it, okay. Um, towns are usually gonna partner with people and some are partnering with their county on a project like this, but yeah, it's possible. Okay, it's possible to do that. Um, you don't need to worry about the levy at all anymore, folks. Do what they're going to do with the levy. We're hands off with the levy. There's no connection anymore between the levy and lost revenue. We had to create an account when you got the money. Just keep it in the account. That is correct, Sonia. Okay, para payments that are part of payroll count as a pension fund. Yeah, I wouldn't try to touch any para with this, okay, because it is pension related. Please don't do that. But again, shifting allows you to use your, your ARPA money on some general service that you're gonna do out of your, your general fund. And if you need to make up money in para, you take it from your general fund, okay? So you, it, it's just a shift. You end up accomplishing the same thing you wanted. You just have to take a little roundabout way on something like that. 
Okay. Linda, thank you for saying we're making it simple. That is absolutely our goal. And we sometimes don't know if we're succeeding. Um, so when will we get the second installment? Um, I believe it is September of next year. Carl, do you happen to know? Uh, people are saying May and people are saying September. In generally speaking, the only information I could see on it is about a year after the initial distribution. And I don't know if that means what the state received or what each individual local government received. Um, if a township is in the position where they desperately need that second half of money, please contact, contact us because we have a bigger problem. Maybe we can help you with that. Um, let us know what's going on there. Okay, if, if you really badly need that money for something, maybe we can help uh, and, and help folks bridge the gap on something like that. Uh, it's April, April 30th. The first report is due. Jeff has, has dropped in there for us. Okay. Uh, does the lost revenue category include the handicapped access? Yes. And the air filter? Yes. Okay. We don't have to put those in responses to the pandemic anymore. You can make it easy. Refund to local businesses. Again, Dave, that's, that's the, um, that's the, uh, you'll have to use the response to the pandemic category and you'll have to do it as a grant program, okay, to give to businesses and folks in the community. Because generally, towns, we don't have that authority in, in statute. And so we're, to be able to do it, you're relying on federal law and the, the um, directions given by it, okay? Is the standard allowance for lost revenue each year or for the total? It's for the total. And I'm quite confident no township got 10 million or more. Okay, not even White Bear, our biggest township. So every township that got this, that applied, should be able to use the standard allowance for this and use the whole amount as lost revenue. No transferring, folks. Again, no transferring. Uh, can we use the monies for, for a lake cleanup purpose? Potentially, if you have a, if you have a, it still has to be allowed by law and certain things are allowed with with lake cleanup, but certain things are not. So we'd have to dig deeper into, is that an allowed use in the first place? And if it's allowed use in statute, then yes, you'd be able to. Copies of the forms. Copies of the forms are online on our webpage. Go to mntownships.org. On the right, there's a news and events dropdown. And there you'll find ARPA information. And in ARPA information, there's a lot of stuff there. Okay, But one of them is ARPA uses tab. There's a tab you can click. And if you scroll down, you'll find all of these, all of these, uh, uh, these resolutions that we've produced and this is being recorded if you really want to watch us again you can go on and watch us again okay um the spreadsheet's informative thank you again carl for dropping that uh they have the money we, we need to make a new arpa fund number and transfer yeah so you put it into a ctas account for arpa and spend it out of that okay um jeff does think the next installment of money will be sometime next summer coming up can you make improvements to park equipment? Yes, you can. Okay. Um, and Jeff says one township, uh, the, the most we've seen is 1.2 million. So we're well below the amount. Okay. Should wages for ARP work time in taking these trainings not go through para? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. Laura, you'd have to call us and I'd have to look into that. It's wages worked. If it's an employee, it's hours worked. And so it wouldn't, I don't think it would affect para. If it's wages, if it's hours worked, you report it as hours work. The payment can come from, or reimbursement can come from ARPA, but that has nothing to do with, with para really, okay? Because para is usually related to what, what did you earn in the course of your job? And the hours worked and earnings relate to the para payment. So in that case, we're just gonna take a reimbursement from the ARPA for administration. To open a circus, no, Linda. I'm going to have to say no. I don't see a public purpose in opening a circus, but if you can find a statute, I'm going to add it to our book. But you can do a township celebration under 365.10 subdivision. I don't remember which subdivision, but if you did a town celebration and contracted with a, cir with a circus, then yes, you can have your circus. Uh, not my monkeys, not my circus. There you go. If it all goes into road and bridge, can I still allocate to general spending or replace the funds back? All right, folks, so let's do this again. All your ARPA money goes into a CTAS account for ARPA and it doesn't move to any other account, okay? Don't try to transfer it to another account. It stays there and it gets spent right out of that ARPA category. You're not gonna move it into general fund. You're not gonna move it into road and bridge, okay? Make it simple on yourself. Make it simple on the accounting. For supervisors, 
you don't want it moved because now you're going to have to audit that during your board of audit and just adds lines to the paperwork you have to deal with. Okay. Clerks and treasurers, you guys have to monkey with CTAS. Okay. You guys got monkeys on my brain now. Um, uh, you don't want to do that either. Okay. So make it simple on yourself. Stop trying to transfer stuff. All ARPA money in the ARPA fund in CTAS, it gets spent out of there and doesn't leave until you spend it on something. Okay. Very, very simple approach to this. This is as simple as we can make it. Okay. Um, new equipment. Yes, Marion. New equipment's fine as long as it's a legal public purpose. Okay. Uh, amount to fill in on the resolution. You got, uh, you're going to get a total amount from, from the ARPA program. And that's the amount you put in there. Now, if you're confused and, and, and we can't find the number, you could do one resolution now and wait till you get the rest of the money and do a second resolution reflecting what you got later. Okay, but we should be able to figure out what you're going to get because it's determined already. There's no question in that. And we should be able to put that into the resolution. For most folks, it's going to be the first half times two and then should be the supplemental payment because I don't know that, I haven't heard that the supplemental payment will be added also to the second half. So the ARPA account number, account is an account number, which is separate from the general road and bridge and fire fund. Yes, separate account. Accounting codes, this is David's message. Accounting codes and object codes will provide reporting data. David knows what that means and you can ask David what that means. David, do you wanna mention what you're talking about there? If, if you can unmute, can you describe that briefly for our clerks and treasurers? And he might not be able to. Lori or, or Dominique, would you be able to pick that one up as far as accounting codes and object codes? What does that mean for somebody with, with CTAS? That is um, what I was talking about earlier. I did already get a request for those ARPA codes. Those account numbers and those object codes are what you would be able to use for your reporting on what you used it for. Do I, I totally agree with Steve and I can't emphasize it enough set up a separate ARPA fund in your CTAS and don't move that money. When you pay, pay out your bills, that's the fund number you're gonna use is that ARPA fund. And then the David, different accounts and the different object codes, we have that list. And if you just send me a quick email then, or give me a call, I can get them to you. Thank you. And, and if we need, we're gonna, We'll, we'll try to give some direction on this too. And this is gonna be a common issue for all these folks. And, and so if we can, we'll try to put this in a document or a brief training brief, okay? Real, you know, again, we're trying to make these things easy um, that folks can go use for reporting or for your CTAS, not for your reporting, excuse me, for CTAS only. We'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do to make this one message very clear on its own, a standalone thing for, for clerks and treasurers, okay? Um, a lot of townships that did not apply to, for money, that is absolutely correct, uh, despite, and, and I wanna mention how much work our whole team did, okay? Jeff, who, he's on here, okay, Jeff is on here. Leslie, Carl, Lori, all of our trainers, especially Dominique, Dominique did so much work on this thing. Um, we, we made an effort with this that we have never done before in my time with Matt and that I've ever heard about to get every township registered. We were doing it for them if they needed. Okay, so we published it. Those of you who are on our weekly calls, you heard us talk about it and you probably got tired of us talking about it. Okay, uh, we were tired of talking about it, but it was so important that we built this thing and tried to get all of these towns to, to apply. Okay, those who didn't, they're now very much regretting what's going on with this. So I thank all of you for applying because you, you saw the possibility. And even if you didn't, you applied anyway. Okay, so, um, Thank you to our team, but also thank you to all of you for applying because this was just turned out to be a big deal for a lot of townships. Okay. Um, Dave, if, if you're not sure what you can use it for, you give us a call. We're going to help you spend it. Okay. Because there's so many things you can use it for. You can now use it for your road and bridge. You can now use it for your uh, payroll. You can use it for your fire contract. If you have a fire contract, and I imagine you do. You can pay your fire contract with this money. It is, it is so open that anybody who's saying, we don't know what we can spend it on, um, we'll find the number. We'll find it for you, okay? Because it's, it's, it's like general fund. It's like your levy. This would be like saying, oh, we don't need any levy money. Well, you do. You have spending. There's, there's, the only things you can't do is pay for debt and make a rainy day fund. That's the only things that you can't do anymore and make a circus, as I mentioned earlier, okay? Uh, so 
So please give us a call. We'll talk to you. We'll figure out something that you guys spend on and that you can use this money for. And if you want, ultimately, your voters could lower their levy later because you were able to get this and they didn't need to levy the same amount in the next year. Okay. Um, fire and rescue. It wouldn't necessarily be designating to them. We'd be going back to, can you give money to some group in the first place? And you got to look at, do they need it? Uh, there's a, been a trend to just give money to fire. Well, they have to have a reason usually, okay? Don't just give money away on these things, okay? They got a lot of money, especially if, if they're a municipal department, they got money too, okay? And they got CARES money, and there's a special fund within ARPA for fire departments. There's, from what I can tell, no lack of funding put into these things, okay? Ambulance might be a little different. They're funded differently, okay? Uh, we, we will, folks, I'm going to, I'm going to, not answer any more CTAS because because clearly there's a lot of interest. We'll follow up with something for CTAS. Okay, um, town hall. Yeah, you can use it for a town hall. Um, remove cares, replace COVID. Yeah, I, I suppose you, you could do that. You're just gonna have to title the project for reporting purposes. Okay. Um, David mentions it's fund. He doesn't have a mic, and I'm sorry for that, but uh, I appreciate the help, David. So um, I think we've covered just about any of the broad things that we've had here. Um, if you have other questions, please let us know. You know, we're 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 happy to to take these on an individual basis. This training is going to be put online for you if you need it again. Um, we had a lot of participation today. I, we're we're up we're up to three fifty three sixty people. So that's a lot of townships that are participating. Um, Carl, I want to thank you again for all the work you did on this. It was a big help and for doing the presentations and folks uh, for for all the all the questions because that helps us think about what you need. And, and clearly today, we need to help you with CTAS. So this was a message to us to, to get something going on that. So thank you for that. Um, if you have other questions, please email, call. We will try to help you out with that. Okay, thanks everybody.